Welcome back to the longest journey. Let's see. The whole fountain's been carved in one piece from a granite like material. Very impressive. I've never seen anything like it. I'm back at the longest journey, continuing to play through it. I did get the mod to do the whole HD update and make it look better, but I probably won't be able to do that until after this game. After this game. Because I'm going to have to take time to actually uh, replay everything. In a world without the screen, that's what passes for entertainment, and it's pretty darn good. What a sorry looking bird. Hey, you don't look too polished yourself, lady. Oops, I didn't know you could talk. Didn't look as if you could talk either. Touche. Maps, I got maps. Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top notch, hand drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. How much are your maps? Ah, that depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six Aaron's fresh oh, from the quill of a Sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here, or you know that. He's got a point there. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. So you have a Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps. Is that yes, you mind, or yes, you don't mind? Do you know Vestrum Tobias? Everyone knows Vestrum Tobias, girl. He's been an important part of this city for as long as I can remember. What can you tell me about him? The Vestrum is an honorable man, but a conservative one. And I don't know if he still has the best interests of the people at heart. Sometimes I think he worries too much about custom. The Sentinel have been our so-called protectors and keepers of the balance for so long, we don't even think of it anymore. But now that the Vanguard are introducing a new way of thinking, new philosophies, I'm afraid the Sentinel will find their power diminished before too long. Their resistance to change will be their downfall. Mark my words, their downfall for certain. And Tobias, honorable man that he is, will be remembered as the captain who went down with his ship. Oh. How do you get along with your neighbors? They don't. The cup's handler? Stay away from him, miss. He takes great joy in robbing people's purses. You can't beat him, not without magic. And he doesn't allow magic at his table. How would he know if I did use magic? Oh, he's got one of those blasted talismans. They're always digging up magical artifacts in Chicagriel, and they sell them to dogs Chicago. like him for a silver coin or two. Get a proper job, you son of a mole. What do you know about Stark? Tony Stark? Land of wonders, strange customs, and machinery. Ah, to be in Stark. I'd give my right leg. Well, perhaps not my right leg as such. You really need two sturdy legs to stand on in this business, or you'll find yourself... Falling? Um, uh, yes, uh, a grand place indeed, free of this blasted, chaotic, unpredictable magic does no good to anyone. Now, machines built by man, controlled by man, in servitude of man, that's the future, isn't it? Yes, the Vanguard may be a little unorthodox in their methods and teachings, but they're right about one thing. Stark and Arcadia belong together, not apart. What's Arcadia like? 
What can I say about a whole world, girl? It's a beautiful place for sure, but we're stuck in the past. We don't look ahead, not like our cousins in Stark. Magic is all well and good, but it won't bring our world into the modern age, and Arcadia is untamed. It's wild and unpredictable. Good for the map business, sure, but not so good for productivity and expansion. No, some people may consider our world a paradise. The Sentinel, for one, they prefer to keep it just the way it is. Me, I'd like to see some changes, and fast. Always Thanks for being your on help. the other side, isn't it? Maps! No maps for me today. Thanks. Fair enough, miss, but don't expect me to come running to your aid if you ever get lost in Riverwood. Without my maps, you'll probably end up a mole's dinner or worse. Maps! That's good. Do I? It's a game of some kind. Want to test your skill and perception with a game of cups? There are prizes to be won! Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Time is money, so make it quick. Is that some more proper? What do you know about Vestrum Tobias? Vestrum Tobias, eh? The High Priest of the Sentinel himself. Did you know they call themselves the Fathers? What a joke. When was the last time they did anything for us, the people? No. They are only interested in sticking with their outdated customs and keeping their secrets under lock. I'm getting more and more inclined to listen to these new people, the Vanguard. Their ideas appeal to me. They may be radical, but we're past due for a change. Only thing I don't wholly approve of is their alliance with the Tyrant. Filthy, dangerous people. But the Vanguard seem to have them under control, so I'm not too worried. I wish they wouldn't allow them into the city, though. How do you get along with your neighbor? The maps merchant? We've faced each other for six years now, every single day, and he never speaks a word to me except to insult me. Where did you speak to him? Nose high in the sky. Calls me a charlatan, as if he's the guardian himself. You know, good oversized bag of wind. I feel like they Do you know like anything about Stark? Not I feel like much. they like each other. That's all. I'm I say. not too sure if I even believe in the place. I mean, you hear the stories and you read the books. Uh, well, I don't, but some do. A place where there's no magic, only science. Sounds like a bloody paradise, doesn't it? I mean, with my um <clears throat> skills, I could make a killing in a place like that. But if you don't have magic, there's other ways. What's Arcadia like? What a queer question that is. What's the world like? It's big for is one, it? and too expensive. And they should ban Dalmari women from gambling because I swear they have a second sight. Thanks. Now, how about a game of cups? What can I win? Well. There's coin, of course. Double your bet or choose from a wide variety of exotic prizes. Like the board? Like this antique Domari canter from Guienne. A superb yeah, yeah. replica of Mount Tyrone, cast in pure solid iron. A magic walnut from the once glorious island kingdom of Anciel. And this, um, unique bird. I want the bird. Get me out of here! Keep your beak shut, you scraggly piece of... <clears throat> and he talks! Great for feasts and for the amusement of infants. He's our top prize, a real keeper. I want the board. How do I play? You put your coin down on the table. I put a cup on top of it and shuffled it around with the other two cups. And all you have to do is guess which one hides your coin. Okay, easy enough. And remember, no magic used, and none allowed. This amulet right here will light up if you use magic. Then you'll be banned. For life! Okay, let's go. I don't have any coin. Just place your bet, 
<clears throat> investment on the table and the game will begin. Actually, before I do that, I should probably save because of my luck. It's not gonna be good. My luck. I mean, the only thing I have value I have is the ring. Is that gold? Only valid Arcanian coin in iron and other precious metals allowed at my table, young lady. Take your worthless gold elsewhere. Gold? Worthless? Now I have heard everything. Oh, yeah. In that case, I need to leave and see if I can get, um... Money. I don't think I have anything else that would be of value. City. City. I don't know if I can even go this far yet. Oh. Those guys must be part of the city watch. They look a hell of a lot more intimidating than the Newport cops, despite the lack of an exoskeleton. Or a gun. Guess I'll go back and talk to this mom, this dude. Back to the temple. What do I have? Do I have to go back to get anything of value? Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. Why can't they exist? I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. You know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. I don't know if they leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance, and about Stark, and Arcadia, and... This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... How do you not know? All I know is that something strange is happening in... In my world, I guess. You think? I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... Couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here, to learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Why? I believe in it. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. Do I... Do you just... Oh, you're gonna go yourself? Okay. This is the true story of the balance. As observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance, the Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. 
the wall paintings we are looking at, became known as the murals of the balance. And it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. Yay. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. Sounds more chaotic to You're me. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. It is human for you. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had As happened it before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. That's what apocalypse did. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drykin, Draken, Dragons, whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. Why? There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the order of the balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark. Magic and science. Chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted 13. Six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between. The drag kin, our mentor, our custodian our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks. To split a world in two. To create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes. And so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them. A disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one. A conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the thirteen came to the tower and with them a woman whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. Our she destiny. would be the first guardian the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. A long wind story. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be guardian, 
The disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared, and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. Pretty long time. The one who was kin picked up the disc and said, This disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued, Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disc is broken. But nor can it be repaired without the disc being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on. Without the precious stones that adorn each piece, I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the worlds reunited, and that day will come, you will assemble the disk, and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne, witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In fair. service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian. And with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun, the era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children and stories to frighten and entertain around the fire. And while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years it changed radically. 
The Vanguard wanted the divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the glorious ages, when humankind could control the forces of cosmos. But first they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a 1,000 years. Every 1,000 years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been 200 years since the previous guardian, the 12th guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the 12th guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne, to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. How do you know it's gonna be chaos? Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared. And there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new Guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... Shift? And he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... Talent. talent. Not yet. But in time, you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can't you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that, yes. Yes, you are. That's so not cool. I don't know, it's pretty cold. No, it has been unseasonably warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. It makes perfect sense. That is good news. Come see me again Short if you have any Vanguard. more questions. To write how oh diary 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 more diary diary reading the diary and more stuff oh cool I need and things I really don't want to have to go through that, um... I mean, he didn't even tell me about this mural. Do you have any cash? Excuse me. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? 
That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. To the gate. Who'd know about West House? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. A normal human. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects gnats of the Northlands. So I gotta go talk to the gnat guy. That was a ding. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. He's actually not wrong there. But who is he? But he what is, is who he, he is? is. What he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. It ain't wrong. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about Arcadia? I will try my best to answer any question you may have, April. What's the history of Arcadia? There is so much I do not know where to begin. In truth, it would be wiser to ask someone else, unless you wish to know about the Fathers, the Balance, or Mudhoppers. Mudhoppers? Yeah. <laughs> My secret passion. I study them. They are a most fascinating species. Most fascinating indeed. But I am not practically versed in the intricacies of history, I am sorry to say. What's Mercuria like? I have lived in this city all my life, and still it amazes me what a diverse, exciting, and wonderful place it is. Many have called Mercuria the jewel of the Northlands, and they are right. But it is a diamond in the rough. A city this size can never be flawless. There are always shadows, and people who hide in them. Lately, the shadows have grown and darkened and I fear for the future. But Mercuria is still a wonderful place to live. What else can you tell me about Mercuria? Mercuria is the capital of Irede, the unified country, and we are located on the southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyran and Khorasan. Between the Snapjaw and the Gaintby, some might call it. Between the embers and the fire. Yet democracy and peace have reigned for thousands of years now, and although relations may at times be strained with our tyrant neighbors, the High Council are masters of diplomacy. And Lord Igvan Delen is a firm and just chief counselor of the Iredan flag. Tell me a little about Ired. Oh. Ired means both unification and assembly in Haitong. And many still call Irede the unified country, even though it is an age and a half since the lands of the north joined together in alliance. Irede stretches from the plains of Nedra in the north to the Great Sea in the south, and from the territories of Tyran in the west to the thick woodlands in the east. It is populated by humans and Dolmare, Tyran and a number of other races, it is even said that a tribe of Venar have a ring of trees in Riverwood, though I'm not sure that is anything but a myth. None of that made any sense to me. What are the Northlands? The Northlands is a collective term for all the lands north of the Great Sea and south of the border mountains, including Irede, Tyran, and Khorasan. Before, however, the word Northlands was used to describe this entire continent, including the territories north of the mountains and the icy waste beyond that. Some still prefer the latter interpretation of the name. And to the people of the Southlands, 
Anyone hailing from north of the Great Sea is a Northlander regardless. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could assist you. I'll see you later. You will? If you say so, then it must be true. I'll talk to the map guy. Didn't get any coins from this dude. For Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. I guess maps being fresh is there. Bye. Now. Maps! Get your fresh maps here. Buy two, get the second one half price. Well, he's supposed to be outside the city, so. Let's see. Can I go anywhere outside the city? Oh. This guy's selling lobsters? He's selling a variety of fresh shellfish and other, uh, delicacies. To the dog. The size of these galleons is truly breathtaking. And there are dozens of dozens of them, not to mention a number of smaller vessels. Blue fire. It's either propane or magic. Oh, could be both. I mean, propane could just be magic. I know it, that's it. Propane's magic now. There's no sign way of proving what propane does. It's completely magic. Hello. Hello, old man. Well, who are you calling old I man? got me no treasure, and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. Am I going to off this ask you questions, or...? What are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What it look like I be doing? I'm smoking a pipe. I'm not well versed in maritime customs. Mar what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, do you not? Ah, the smell of the salty sea, the lapping of waves on your ship, the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every part. I, I tell yous, I be having stories about the sea. What have you got in that chest? An odd question what to ask. chest? The one you're sitting on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. I me stool carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. I will punch you. But what's in it? No priceless treasure, that be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. Care to share some of your maritime stories with me? Marwat? Ah, tales of the sea, right? Sure, sweetie, I'd be happy to. Now, what stories be I wanted to hear, then? Any tale of your exciting adventures will do. Aye, I'd be having plenty of tales to tell. There be the tale of me adventures in the Bakshivan Empire, if you'd be interested. It'd be a tale of grand romance. Just up your alley, be sure of it. Sure, that sounds like a fine story. 
Here is an hour long Aye. story. You're welcome, guys. It'd be near on 50 years ago that I was a mate on a sturdy old lady called the Three Legged Whore. That's not the a good what? Name. What do I be saying? She was called the Thrifty Horse, she was. Aye, that be her name. The Whistle Watch It. Uh, you don't remember the ship's name, do you? Ah, uh, anyways, I be a young mate then, and we be anchored in Mount Herba, the grand western port of the once glorious Bakshivan Empire. I be having ship leave until the following evening, and it be me first visit to that exotic and dangerous port. So I sits out to have a look around. Now, bear in mind that Mount Herba be ruled by a mock, like all large Bakshivan cities. In principle, the mock be having to report to and pay half of all taxes to the emperor in Port Altaban. But with the Bakshivan Empire having all but crumbled into pieces, the provinces do be having the power to do pretty much as they be wanting. Err, and so I sets out on me own that day to explore the city. Now, bear in mind that all the cities of the Southlands. Oh, oh it's all good. I'm not having to listen to this and whole that story. be me adventures in the once glorious empire of Bakshiva. And that be how I meet me bird bird. How I see Dus and the romance the Mock's daughter. How I be chased from Mount Herba by the Mock's soldiers. And how I be the first man to walk across the desert of Shangagriel, the wastelands. And how I be getting this awful rash on. Ah, girl, you do not be sleeping, do you? That story went on for two and a half days. What? 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 Sleeping? N no, 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 no. Just concentrating really hard. Err. Good story, though. Solid. Solid material. Ever considered doing a book? Aye, but the agents in Marcuria be bloodthirsty vampires with no thought but to milk your life's blood. Oh. So they take an outrageous commission, then? No. They actually be bloodthirsty vampires with a penchant for biting your neck when you ain't be looking. Oh. Huh. That's good to know. So. No, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live snakes. Aye, snakes that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be, then. Oh, no, now, now I definitely need to see what's in the chest. I'm still curious about that chest. Right, right. I be telling you, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. But it be where I keep me personal articles. And things I be picking up now and then on me travels. And me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man. He be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. I know where a talking bird is. What happened to your talking bird? I be it cheated out of him. I... That cups handler on the marketplace be cheating me in a full game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to win me money back. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. I my best friend taken from me. Cursed to be the balance. It be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won. A prize in a cups game. We shouldn't Hit have... the handler thrice and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. Oh. Nice. I'd better get going. Ah, you young'uns all be always running around. Everything be so important. He's be having no time to sit down and take a breath. 
So go. Be not wasting your time here with me. It's a lighthouse. I wouldn't feel too comfortable about sailing it. Talk to sailor. Ahoy there, matey. Pardon. Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? Are you five? No. W what do you say then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping in the wind? Maybe. Um, I can't really see it. No. And why is that then? Because... Because it's not... Windy? Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Jesus, woman. Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars. By Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Gien? Are you being sarcastic? No. Sarcastic? Really? Me? What in Jal's name makes you think that? How long's it been since the last wind? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him. But not one has returned. Now the A-Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. But I'm afraid that just might piss him off. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north beyond Riverwood. Thanks for the chat. Aye. Aye. Ahoy. Assorted cargo. It's a small ship or boat. I don't know the Not really sure what I gotta do. I'm, I mean, obviously, I gotta deal with the alchemist. And I gotta get the board. But I'm not sure how I get to that point. Alright, oh, let's reach the dock. Come on, double the time. Those guys must be part of. Hmm. See, the thing is, I don't have anything of value. At least I don't think I have. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps. 
Thanks for your help. Okay. Maps. Bye. Maps. Get your fresh maps here. Buy two. Get the second one half price. How about a game of cups today? Okay, let's go. Just place your bet, <clears throat> investment, on the table and the game will begin. I'm assuming you win this by like a magnet. It's a talking bird. Never seen anything like it. Dolls. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I know I have to get the board, and I, I have to deal with the alchemist. Excuse me. I wouldn't screw myself over and like missing an item. I'll see you later. You keep telling me so, and I do believe you. Enormous. Oh, I'm just hoping I'm not missing something. I want to go to small pier. It's just a boring old non treasure chest. Boring old non treasure chest. This lady's selling fresh fish. I've never seen fish like this before. But if it's wet and has fins, fish it is. Into the dock. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of Right, rabbit carcasses. Ugh. I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, good to know. I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular. That was a suck to roll. I thought he said talk to the map maker, the map salesman. Excuse me. Who did you say I should see about West House? The map merchant at the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know Westhouse by his real name. Oh. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. 
A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. I'll see you later. So I should have you talked keep to him. telling me so, and I do believe you. I should have talked to him beforehand. I'm a silly goose. Maps! Maps? Can you tell me where the rolling man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because I need to find him. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps. I really need to know where the rolling man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty, Pretty please. please. No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. Please tell me where the rolling man lives. No, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. You're late again. And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Domari to do a human job. What are you gonna do now without a delivery boy? And hire a new one, of course. Ah, uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! Maybe I could help you out. I'm not a you boy, but out. I could do some deliveries. I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work if the Guild of Merchants don't find out. I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job. I need the if money. You want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the captain of the White Dragon. Nebeve, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Oh, and remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. That's Bye now. Maps, fresh, detailed, life-saving maps. That's the map. Got it. Off I go. That's one of the issues I always had with old puzzle games, is that if I didn't go back and talk to him, I could not proceed. Nice day for it. Second. Not really, no. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I don't. I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the White Dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the Temple Market. Hi. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. I need a sign first. I guess I can't dive. See, that's what I would have. See, I would always have Thank you. Here. There's an errand for your trouble.
sign this, please? What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, you always have them sign that for one. Me. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Please sign it or I won't get paid. I just gave you an errand. That should be enough to cover it, I. Forget the money. That's not why I need your signature. I need you to sign so that I can keep my job and hopefully find a way home. Sorry. But it brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Um. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? Who said you had a soul? I'm from Guyen, and we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. <laughs> uh, so what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Oh. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. Oh, God. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing, but it distracts the Mojal. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal. Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't oh. that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. He's got a point there. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. That didn't answer my question. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal. But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. I mean, you could just punch him in the face. Back to the city. Back to the city, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna use my one coin to buy an instrument. To play for him to get him to sign. But I need that coin. Run, woman. What's your, um, most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. Oh god, I don't know what he's saying. Well. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? Is that a yes? Did I, did I get the flute? Low cutscene. As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. 
Oh, Not very well, but I'm sure the uh, Mojo won't mind. So I'm back to where I started. No money, and I still gotta get the boat out of whatever trap the boat's in. Yeah, just luck that you know how to play the one instrument you could spend money to pay. How are you today, then? Like you care. I'm gonna push you Bye. in the water. Do I give it to him? I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on. But don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojo will surely wreak vengeance on us both. Only you. I don't believe in Mojo. No, I don't have to do anything. Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Hey, I'm out of here. Bye, Captain, whatever your face is. Nope, oh, keep going. I was looking at things. How dare you stop and walk back? Don't have agency. Ready for my next job, sir. Yes, yes, good, good. Uh, did you get the captain's signature? Yes. Hand me the delivery list so that I can see for myself. You know, you remind me of somebody I know. A real Scrooge. Good. Uh, what's a Scrooge? Maps, new revisions, lifesavers, maps. Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um, no. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? No. I forget. You forget you uh, don't let know. me explain then. Now, pay attention because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that. We, you'll turn left. Sure. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, I Reed Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 yeah, years ago. No one knows there. what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Mercuria. And that's where West House... I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. 
Eventually, you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tandak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall, but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. I, I like that storyline. It's, it's a talking bird. Time for me to go rest. They showed fighting, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's showed fighting. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, well, <clears throat> guess you're not, uh... You're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Senya, are you? Sorry, I don't know who... No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. <laughs> Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... Yeah, hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. Are you from Stark, too? And does any of this have to do with Tony? The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit. But I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what may I do for you? I need to give you your map. I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? <laughs> it's it from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Hmm? Hold your horses. What are you doing working for the guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. Possibly. I don't know. I'm not guns planning on seen. staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. 
gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? I don't you know. You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? You, you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. <laughs> I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question yep. with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Yep, that's the guy. Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. Wait, what? But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. She's got a point. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention 300 years... Quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. Yeah, they're good for a long time. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home. To Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical, those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say... I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind, the occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown attracts. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the 
void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Hello, Mr. Westhouse. Hello. How am I supposed back to Back again so soon, Miss Ryan? I should get going. All right. All right. Do, do I have choices now? I like my outfit. It's inexpensive. Cool. Hold on one second, oh. Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Hmm. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it if it's any help. I am Pancho Ross. Thanks. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it... It worked! It's ticking! Yay! Oh, there we go. I... I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. He's got a point. Now you go ahead, Miss Ray, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. How long have we been gone? Years? Cortez. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Yeah, going crazy. Let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. Yes, you have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance, about Stark and Arcadia. 
A man named Tobias. He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Yang good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrument then, a student of the balance. But he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance? Not really. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing, and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most, but even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez. But several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. Or so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. Yeah, but that I'd doesn't for work the truth, for Just to allies. be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... There are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. I feel like I need to know everything. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. Well, so what do shifter? I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. 
I think they may have him. Makes sense. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He's the guardian. He left his realm, but he's the last guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this, but what they don't know yet is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself, the other is the four jewels, the eyes of the dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. Two in Arcadia and two in Stark. The white dragon has one, as does the old one. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here, and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the Tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Nope. Sure. They're... Oh. That's the Vanguard? See. Then they're big. Very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that, so they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion, and they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? Punch it. You're the key, April. Works every time. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... no. That will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. Then imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some Vanguard ass? 
find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? Easy. And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. A normal Tuesday. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18. I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. But nobody's scared. I will help people. you, April. Others too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm the chosen one. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? Why can't you tell people? There is no chosen one, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers, that I wasn't like everybody else. True, but you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are and what you will be. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Maybe Something else. Think Vanguard could be right. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just... Me. And that should be enough. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be... Yes, let's save the world. Where do Wrong we start? Choice. Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city. But where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information They're is hard church. to find. Go to Remember the, the painting I showed you yesterday? And talk to them. Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right. Okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul, at the Hope Street Cathedral. He's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait. Did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still. I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan, then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. Oh, I gotta wait for him to leave. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna... Diary time. Reading diary. I can't read it because I don't know how to read. I want to just go with order. Leave me alone. My 
guess I should actually save as well. Just in case the game crashes, I don't have to worry about going through all that deposition again. Pulling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I don't know anything. I've had a few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than last night? Much weirder. I mean, it sounded like what happened here could have... It might just have been mass suggestion, or a hologram, or even rapture gas. April. It's happened, I know. I know it was probably very real to you. And I'm not saying it wasn't, but the alternatives... Are the alternatives so much worse? That there are things going on that we can't explain? That there's more to life than what science teaches us? Yes. I don't know, Charlie. That, that's terrifying. She did, but I don't. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? That's the plan. Maybe. It's like a, a date. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. She knows about the show, so she'll be here. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon. So you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. I don't have control, okay. Hey look, it's Emma, my BFFF from my other life. So where have you been all day? You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again, and on top of that, Zach brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, yeah. oh shit! Zach! I totally forgot. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I can't. My word is my life. I made a promise. Yeah. <laughs> to that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. A promise a is promise a promise. A promise is a promise. I have to go. Commendable, but incredibly misguided. He's only after one thing, you know, and that's sex. I just don't have to give him sex. He can forget about that. I'll go, but I'm only staying an hour. I'll tell him I'm tired or sick. Knowing Zach, he'll take that as an invitation to your bed. But I guess you've made up your mind. Go, have a good time. Good luck, you'll need it. A promise is a promise, people. In this life, you only have two things. Your wood and your balls. Once your woods are broken... Um, people stop trusting you. When you say you're gonna do something, you gotta do something. Oh, God. Headache. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. I agree with that Not option. that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey... 
like that's not enough, I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. Last night's, um, uh, date is not something any of us should be reminded of, and I'm not just talking about the incident with the groping and me kicking him in the groin. Doesn't he get that no means no? No. What's more freaky is that you're having a conversation with yourself. Alright. More things. More things. Save. And that's gonna be the game for tonight. Thank you for watching. If you like, subscribe and join. If you didn't like, subscribe and comment. Thank you.